Um, I want to go ahead and launch a poll question. Um, and uh, just, just pick what, what type of um, platforms you guys are, are using. Um, and if it's multiple, then it's multiple. If it's all, then select all. Um, so we're not limited just to uh, merge data together from these four listed system. Uh, ALS is airborne, MLS is um, mobile, uh, ULS is unmanned, and then TLS is terrestrial. Suck them both, suck them all, if you have them all. Um, we do, and that's what this, this project is, uh, today I'm gonna show you it's all about. It's quite exciting. Um, and it's quite easy too. So this, this presentation is not gonna be extremely long. It's gonna be about 30, 35 minutes and I'll take some questions afterwards. Uh, if you have additional information, sorry, if you have additional, additional questions on the system that I'm showing you today, uh, please uh, reach out to us and then um, we will um, guide your questions accordingly to the um, experts. Um, okay, let's wait a little bit longer. So it looks like, um, 75% people voted and the majority of our users right now or listeners um, is TLS, okay? So it's threshold laser scanning, right? And and a lot of times um, uh, our customers, some some customers do have multiple systems, so which is good because then they can utilize um, this um, presentation. Um, now, one thing I didn't I didn't mention in here um, in my presentation because it's it's not really lidar it's it's um it's photogrammetry so a lot of our users our customers do have um, uh, photogrammetry um, drones so they can convert it into a last file uh, of course that would work in the same principle as what we're going to be showing you today okay so uh, don't think this is a strictly ladder so you can certainly try all this um, and it doesn't doesn't really cost you anything so thank you everybody for taking the poll questions and then there we go there's a result so the majority tls users some uls uh, a lot of mls as well and then of course als all right cool like right, this all right okay um i think it's one o'clock on the dot so we can get started um hi everyone uh, welcome to today's uh regal one of regal's many uh, webinars uh, i don't think this subject's been covered yet um, i took a poll last time and this is a popular um topic so i'm going to cover it today it's again it's going to be fast sweet and it's really easy um I do want to make a disclaimer that we're working with Regal uh, software suites uh, of uh, kinematic to LAS, uh, sorry, to uh, Terrestrial. And then uh, Data Fusion. Um, we're going to be merging airborne laser systems with mobile laser systems, unmanned laser systems, and Terrestrial. My name is Tan Nguyen. I'm the business development manager. Uh, my specialty is Terrestrial laser scanning. Um, technology applications and i'm also the regal california lead uh, so those who don't know this year at the beginning we opened up a couple of office one in particular in canada and also one in canada right. um let's go over the agenda so on project attributes we're going to talk a little about the project um uh, very cool uh, exciting project that we're working on for the last few months and we can continue working throughout the main remaining of 2020 uh the ladder system that we use, so I'm going to get a little bit about the specifications and the uh, scan parameters that we use. Um, not too much in detail. You know? If you want more detail, you contact us uh, directly. Uh, and then we're looking at export, right? So in order to combine something, we've got to have some exports in there. And we're going to be using RIPE process. Um, uh, I have the luxury of uh, assessing this, uh, all the systems, um, so I'll get to be able to play with all the data. <laughs> And then import, um, so how we bring the data in, and that's gonna be through RiseCam Pro. So if you don't know, RiseCam Pro is the companion software for our terrestrial laser scanners, uh, but it does other things besides just registering its own native data, right? Um, it, 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 it can bring in, you know, 
uh, different formats of data and then merge them together and also uh, filtering too as well. We can filter um, uh, data from different platforms if exported, if done right. Um, and then we'll look at some data fusion and then of course the results from it, okay? Um, take some questions at the end. Um, here we go. Um, we'll start out with the uh, attributes. So this project, it's, um, we, uh, if you don't know out there, we are um, building a new um, flagship headquarters in North America. Uh, it's the Rigo USA headquarters. This happened to be in Winter Garden, Florida. It's a 17,000 square foot multi-story building. Um, very modern, very high tech. Uh, with this new facility, uh, we're going to be able to um, uh, increase our capacity to do system maintenance, systems repair, uh, increase our marketing, sales, uh, overall expand our footprint. Um, uh, for North America and, 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 and try to keep everything within uh, Regal USA um, so that we can uh, service our customer uh, better, more efficient, more effective. Um, very excited to have this new uh, facility being built and it's long overdue for all of our employees here at Regal USA and we're very excited. Uh, the general contractor is DPR Construction. Um, DPR is a very reputable uh, construction company, a commercial um, building. Uh, we are a partner with them too as well. They use our technology. Uh, in fact, a lot of these, um, uh, some of these scans that you'll see is collected um, uh, from DPR. And the one gentleman I like to uh, um, mention is uh, Stuart uh, Dohota. Um, he, he is a um, certified unmanned pilot and also certified Regal uh, TLS um, user. Um, so he's been trained and DPR is a very forward-moving company. Um, they 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 embrace in technology. They utilize technology to their advantage, uh, and they also use technology uh, to to showcase their capability uh, of uh, building uh, construction and the process of it. Right. Um, we are also recently developed a new website. If you haven't looked, uh, please do. Um, there's a link right there. Is uh, ultimateladder.com. Uh, which this will show you is that um, it will show you all the things that we've done throughout this project. You can see here, uh, here's a BIM model with Esri. Uh, well, and then here's a, some scans of uh, the product as it's being built up. Um, here's a rendering of the of new building. So please check out this website. It's a really cool website that we've recently put together. Um, a lot of information, useful information. And then also interviews too, as well, pictures. And then you can also see our broadcasts, uh, sorry, podcasts in, uh, in uh, past webinars. Uh, you wanna go ahead and access them. You can also get it directly from here. Uh, LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube, okay? And if you click on contact, of course, this is where you can contact us for more information. So yeah, very cool website that we just recently um, uh, made. Uh, for uh, ultimate ladder technology. All right. Um, so uh, why are we doing this? It's, I mean, documentation, right? So documentation is huge. It does a lot of good things uh, for everybody from the client to the user to the developer and not just any kind of documentation, detailed information throughout the construction process. And I want to emphasize a little bit on a construction project. Um, but, you know, it's just another application that we're into. Um, so yeah, it's it, by by documenting the, these construction sites in high detail, and high action, high precision, uh, you're able to identify issues at an early stage. That does wonders to construction um, to this construction process by identifying these issues. Right? We can, uh, for example, uh, um, tilt wall construction. And we can identify an embed that was placed incorrectly, or an embed that should have went was there and not supposed to be there or one that's supposed to be there that's not there, we can fix it in this early stage prior to pouring the concrete so that we can reduce uh, delays and also mainly reduce costs. Uh, I hear it costs thousands of dollars to fix an embed. Uh, so after your construction is poor, your embed's wrong, it costs thousands, of, it's just that simple. Uh, so identifying issues at an early stage, is, I think it's, it's a key, uh, one of the key um, components and, and the reason why we use this type of technology uh, throughout the process. Uh, deliver quick and accurate information. So information is, 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 is 
really is a key feature in, in, in all the surveying and mapping construction. Uh, but how you deliver it um, and when you deliver it, it's also a big deal too as well. So, you know, it, and, and with Regal, we try to streamline everything so that it is fast as possible and or at least our ability of, for now, we're always increasing that, uh, increasing deliverable times. Uh, and then accurate, the information is going to be accurate, right? So uh, instead of, um, of, 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 of manually taking, you know, measurements, we're now digitizing everything. Uh, we're using uh, 3D laser scanners um, so that we can deliver a better product, you know, for internal use or for external use. Um, future build out and maintenance. I think this is a big thing that 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 um, the construction it's lacking. Um, you know, a lot of the buildings that we uh, I see now that wants to do a BIM model, well, nothing's there. There's no information. You know, the plans are gone or it's not accessible, you use loss, uh, wherever the case is, it's not there. So by by digitizing everything, by scanning everything and, and, and archiving it, we can really benefit from it in the future. For example, if you want to add on, and that's what we wanted to do to this uh, new headquarters that uh, what we're building now is not the final product. We're adding on. So by having this information, we can locate where our pipes are at. We can locate where our, our, our main structures are at or our even our um, uh, building information. It's, it's all there. It's all accessible. So later on in the future, it really makes it easy to add on to this facility and, and, for, and for maintenance too as well. So, you know, if you want to identify uh, some underground stuff, we have that information. We digitize it. Data doesn't get old, it doesn't mold. As long as you archive it properly, you should always be able to access it back. So yeah, those are some, some really key features on why we're using this technology. Um, and then protect your assets and increase safety. You know, I mean, these building, it, if you're not leasing it, if you're owning it, it's 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 your asset. It's, it's it costs a lot of money to develop it. Um, so if anything happens to it, you know, we always have a digital twin um, to protect it from you know any damages or or anything that could happen and then increase safety right so instead of you know sending a man down into the trench or or uh, or a hole to take a measurement of a pipe sticking out uh we can we can scan it from a safe and no environment uh we can also use it for monitoring too as well because um you're building inside of a downtown area uh one of the aspects of building a building is that you cannot affect the other buildings surrounding it so you can monitor it to so later on if this becomes a legal dispute you have data to back you up um, so, so that's a lot of benefits just besides, you know, uh, doing volumetric calculation. There's a lot of other benefits that you can um, use uh, with this type of uh, documentation. Different ladder platforms for uh, specific applications. So you, as we all know, there's no one system for all. Um, uh, you can be an expert in, 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 in serving roads and you can have an instrument for that. But, you know, when you're building a building, it's very dynamic. Um, you get inside, you got outside, you know, you got um, you got large area, you got small area. Um, and, and really, uh, you know, you can do a lot of application with a threshold scanner, but you couldn't scan, you know, uh, the parameter of all the roads around there with a threshold scanner. You would have to get a mobile system or a or an airborne system, right? So on this particular project, we have the luxury, and it's been so cool uh, working with all my colleagues that that's helped me collect the data, process the data, and then share the data with me. And I just really put it together, put this presentation. So this is just not all me, okay? There's all my colleagues here um, that's, that's helped me out and provided me with data, right? And it's a very simple LAS format. I'll show you how to get it out. I'll show you how to get it in. And then I'll show you how to merge it. Uh, unmanned system, uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that. And then we have, mobile lidar okay and then terrestrial lidar so that's in this project and we're going to be doing this throughout the rest of the year or the lifetime of this process of this of this building being built uh, so keep uh, so check back on our website we're always going to update it with new imagery new data new results um uh, so yeah just just um just check back with us on the website ultimatelidar.com and then you'll see our process uh, our building uh, goes up uh, hopefully in november is when we will all move in um so the ALS system that we used, uh, this was all done, uh, I think, three or four weeks ago uh, within that time frame. Uh, the 1560i uh, dual uh, wavelength is um, it's a very, very, very high-end flagship system for us. It's a high-altitude, ultra-ladder performance, fully integrated and calibrated dual-channel airborne mapping system. Uh, this system uses the 
uh, well-known uh, multiple time around processing capability, multiple detection of targets, uh, and then online waveform processing as well as full and or smart waveform recording um, and results in unsuppressed information content such as signal, uh, each signal target, right? So this system provides uh, very high accuracy um, using the dual wave, uh, dual, using the dual um, channel, uh, which is a green and red, and red is an infrared, um, so we'll see some results from that a little bit later. And then for our unmanned system, we went with the Mini VUX-1 UAV. Now, um, this is not the latest one from the Mini segment. We do have a Mini VUX-2 UAV, which is uh, the same form format, but all, but only um, double the speed. So, which is very, uh, it was the big, big increase because you get more points on the ground and that's really what you want and you get more points out there so you can have a higher probability of getting points on small objects such as power line okay and also penetration of uh, dense voltage too as well uh it's a extremely lightweight system that's really um it's only it's it's the only system of its kind within the um uh, unmanned segment i don't think there's anything out there that i've seen um, I'm sure there is uh, that I've seen. That's time of flight using multiple time returns, um, uh, ladder system. And this is is turnkey, full integrated to fit on the uh, DJI M600 model, uh, which is just a, a, a off the shelf market. But we have a lot of distributor and 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 and, and uh, integration partner that that makes their own um, ladder unmanned platform okay so you're not just dedicated to that but if you want more information please contact us and we'll put you in the right um, people to talk to all right um and then for our mobile system uh this is the the vmx2 ha has always been our flagship uh system um it's a very capable high speed high performance dual scanner mobile mapping system uh which provides uh dense accurate and future rich data and highway speed, right? So the project that I'm showing you today, um, it's not a highway speed, it's 45 miles per hour, uh, because that's the speed limit there. Uh, uh, and then we were getting um, close to, I think 700 points per square meter. Uh, that's two passes though, okay? One east and one westbound. I'll show you the information on that later. Yeah, but this system's got two Regal VUX 1HA sensor on there, uh, each rotating at 250 lines per second at two megahertz total. So you're looking at 2 million points per second. Um, and with optional camera systems such as Ladybug or digital SLR or Regal uh, camera. And then for the threshold part, we use a Regal VZ400i. This is the system that we want to be out there on construction site, road sites, intersections, indoor, outdoor. This is a very dedicated TLS uh, surveying machine um, for most of our terrestrial um, scanning application. Of course, we have a very extensive line of terrestrial laser scanner all the way from a VZ6000, which can shoot out to six clicks. Uh, or down to the VZ400i, which shoot outs to 800 meters. So yeah, um, pick your poison. You know, we have we have um, we have a lot of systems to choose from. Check out our portfolio. Um, so scanning parameters. Uh, so on the 1560i, um, sorry, yeah, 1560i DW, uh, both channels scans at 1,000 kilohertz. Um, on this particular flight mission, we did the scan at 333 meters, uh, which the point density will give you there. Um, so yeah, and this is uh, what's what's the unique thing about this particular flight mission? Because from my understanding, it was the first um, flight mission successful uh, in North America, um, at least in the United States. Uh, from my understanding. But yeah, this is one of the first and we flew it, our, our service um, center guys, we processed the data and it looks absolutely amazing. And it was a large scale too. I just cropped it down to the area that we're interested in, which is the right around here within within the, the, the red lines to the um, the flight lines on the right-hand side. Um, so. okay. And then for our unmanned system, uh, this was flown by uh, DPR construction. Um, and they flew it for us uh, because they are the prime on this 
website and they've been scanning it. So we want them to get their hands on um, on some other cool technology. Um, flight speed was about 12 miles per hour. Um, altitude is about 200 feet. Uh, scanning at one kilohertz. Uh, remember on the two UAV, which is a new uh, mini uh, ladder unmanned system for us has double the pulse rate, uh, which is very good for our users, uh, putting more points out there, uh, getting a higher density and flying at a higher, uh, faster speed. Uh, scanner view was 200 degrees, but we only processed the data within the 90 degrees. Um, this gave us approximately 200 points per square meter. So it's a very dense point cloud. And, and, and later on, when you see this all merged together, it's going to be absolutely amazing. And, and uh, the picture that you saw on, on, on the screen now is about, is about the area that we cropped out, right? So this thing has a lot more data spread. We just cropped it out to uh, uh, that, that area. And then, of course, the terrestrial laser scanner. Um, one thing I want to mention before we move forward was that all the kinematic systems and the terrestrial system, everything was collected on RTK GPS, right? Uh, we did not tie it down to any survey control. Uh, everything, but everything was on RTK. Uh, this particular system that we're looking at is the VZ400i, which has uh, an, an internal uh, uh, L1 GPS that can get correction from a VRS network. Okay, so what that means is that without any other external GPS, uh, I had this system set up so that we uh, we got the system online with the SIM card. So this thing has a dedicated SIM card slot for uh, cellular modem internet access. Um, so that I can get correction from an FDOT um, VRS uh, network. So everything was tied together um, initially using RTK, of course. Then we have our uh, our our, our um, uh, multi-station adjustment tool, which then fine tunes everything together to within a couple centimeters. Um, but yeah, here you can see the little. Uh, this is uh, um, from Google Maps. You can see those are all the positions that we uh, place a scanner at. Um, we also did a lot of inside scan too, but I didn't think that was relevant to this particular project because none of the, 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 the kinematic data uh, merge on the inside. So I didn't, I didn't include that, but um, look at the specs on the scanner. It's um, 45 second scan time per position uh, with images taken simultaneously. Uh, so what that means is that when the scanner rotates and scans, it also takes images at the exact same time. So ultimately, these machines are made for productivity. It's a productive, very productive machine. Uh, we can get you out. We can go out there, take no time to scan, and then spend time in the office uh, where it's safe, it's cool um, to process the data. Uh, this particular project, I've been telling my colleagues to scan at 0.04 angular step width, which gives you a resolution at 7 centimeter at 100 meter range point spacing. Okay, So this is considered a high dense a medium to high dense scan. We can go. We can, you know, our our resolution is is variable. We uh, we can select whatever uh, resolution we want, uh, up to thousands of degrees. So we can get very dense, but not necessary. Uh, but we find this 0 0.04 angular step width is optimal for scan time versus scan point density. Yeah. Um, so yeah, this is our. And you can see on the right hand side. Uh, we can integrate different RTK uh, GPS with it. This one is 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 is, uh, is at a construction site. No. Okay. So the first thing you need to do is that you need to export data. You need data, right? So we need it in an LAS format, and that's what we want to use. So if you're working with Rye Process, you want to go ahead and and process the data as normal as you would in any of your kinematic software. We're not processing any kind of kinematic data today. We're, we're literally merging, right? We're, we're infusing these two data sets together. So the first thing you need to do is you need a point cloud, uh, whether it's from a mobile system, airborne system, ladder unmanned system. Today we're working with all of our Regal platform. Therefore, we're Regal, we're using Regal software suites. So this is right process. Um, if you do uh, work in a coordinate system, make sure everything is the same, right? So here we're in NAT83 Florida East, Jord Model 12 uh, BUS. You pick 1.2, but more importantly, when you do export out of right process, you want to make sure that you're checking uh, with the extra bytes, right? Um, this is a must because um, our reflectance value are um, calibrated. So the reflectance on surfaces at different range um, should be consistent, right? Uh, so you always want to check this box. A lot of people forget 
So just click on the LAS tab and then check right Regal Extra Bytes to LAS. Um, it's going to make your viewing pleasure much better uh, viewing data and reflectance, calibrated reflectance. Yeah. Um, and then in the near future, um, we are working on using Regal database, right? Uh, right now, where we can't, we can, but uh, your point uh, won't, you won't be able to select the right coordinate system. Uh, this is not a, this is not a bug. This is something that we're working on. So I just want to let you know that for the future use of Regal database, um, we're going to be using something called RDB. So when you export next time from Bright Process, um, when it's ready, you're going to export RDB instead of LAS. Okay. Um, the reason why you can't do it now, you can, but the reason why it doesn't work well now is because our uh, Geosys Manager file is not tied to the RDB format when you're exporting it. Yeah. So for now, you can't. For now, stick with LES. In the near future, we will uh, work on uh, using RDB tied with the Geosys Manager file database. Okay. Um, so yeah, so once you have your data, um, you, you, you don't uh, make sure your data is colorized in, in right process or whatever kinematic software you're using, uh, whatever third party you're using, make sure everything is good, just cleaned up. Um, you can clean it up in RiseScan Pro too as well. Uh, but um, yep, you have to get it ready for uh, deliverable, right? You're delivering into uh, import. So uh, RiseScan Pro is very simple. There's two ways to go about this. Um, you can create a new project. Excuse me for one second. <clears throat> um, so what you want to do is that you want to process your threshold data uh, as you normally would. You register everything together, tie it down to server control. If not, otherwise, you're, you know, you're just using GPS. Um, and you can keep that project and then import your kinematic data into it. Um, if not, what you can do is export a point cloud in LES from RiseScan Pro, your threshold data, and then create a new project in RiseScan Pro, and then bring in threshold data, unmanned data, MLS data, and then airborne data. But on this route, I just kept my threshold data project, and then I brought in all the kinematic data. I thought it was a little bit more easier for me, so skip one part of exporting. Uh, you want to create a new scan position for each platform, okay? So here I have three additional platforms that I'm bringing in. Uh, so you just right click on scan and then select new scan position. You can label it to whatever you want here. You can see I labeled it MLS, VUX, 2HA, which is the type of instruments and platforms that it used. Um, and then inside each position, you want to right click on point clouds and then select import. It's just that simple. Follow the process and then your data will come right in. Okay. Um, um, so here, um, I did it to all three platform, mobile platform. Uh, you can see this is before adjustment. Uh, this is the beginning stage of our data fusion. You have your aqua, which is your ALS. Uh, then you have your blue, which is ULS. Then you have your lime, which is MLS. And then of course your terrestrial LiDAR data. So the terrestrial scanner seems uh, a lot more uh, because we were, you know, when we scan it, you know, we 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 we're all over the place. Uh, we even walk out in the street too as well. Uh, oh, well, along the sidewalk, sorry, not the street, along the sidewalk. So make sure we have optimal coverage. Because ultimately, terrestrial LiDAR, it's a little bit, um, it's better in quality and in, 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 in noise level. Uh, the noise level is a lot short, smaller. Um, let's see what else. You have a, 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 a denser point count um, per square meter. Um, and you can tie it down to server control a lot more accurate than any other um, kinematic uh, system, right? Now, of course, um, uh, the accuracy of the project is relative to the accuracy of the server control. Okay, so so um, I, I I definitely understand that. So, but nevertheless, um, terrestrial data um, you can find it better to merge stuff to terrestrial data. Use that as a base uh, to merge your kinematic data to, and that's what we did here today. And again, today everything is worked off of RTK, so our data. Uh, point cloud is relatively close and good to each other anyways. Um, so yeah, this is just a quick look. I thought this was a pretty cool. There we go. All right, and this is the same thing. Uh, just as this is on top of, a, this is a top view uh, with the grid. So you can see the grid that's labeled in state plane, right? In the uh, uh, easting, uh, northing, uh, you can see that's in state plane. Um, and this is just a x-ray view. 
Okay, you see each color represents the data, the different platforms. Okay, so before we um, uh, before we can merge the data together, uh, we have to do something called uh, uh, create plain patches uh, from the point cloud. Now, uh, with the threshold data, you don't have to do anything. That's already ready to go. It's because uh, once we run our automatic registration software on the threshold data, it creates the plain patch files for you. So you don't have to do anything. All you have to do is highlight and select the other data set from the different platforms. So here I have the mini BUX, and then I have the BMX2 HA, and then above that I have the 1560 IDW selected. And then I just right click on any of those point cloud and I select the option find plain patches. Uh, this is just my parameters. So this presentation is going to be available. If you guys have multiple systems and want to use the same thing, all you do is uh, get this presentation at a later date and then just use these parameters. Um, and then you can then create the plain patches. Okay. Uh, all this stuff is really fast to do. And then once you create the plain patches, you can then uh, begin the um, most decision adjustment. So here, before adjustment, uh, this is a cross-section of the road profile. I wanted to show you everything in real time. Uh, so I do have a video that I created. Um, so this is before, you're probably looking at about close to 20 centimeter. Um, you can see the, the, the green is the most dense one because that's the car, that's the mobile LiDAR, okay? Uh, that's that's gonna prevent you the most, but that's on the road, that's right, that's right above, um, that's right below where the scanner is on about two and a half meters away. So you're just gonna get the most point density. And then the yellow, the yellow is the cleanest, right? So that's the threshold uh, LIDAR. Um, and then you have your uh, ALS, which is very nice. Um, then your your blue is your um, ULS, okay? So that's gonna have the most noise in there. But overall, you're probably looking at close to uh, 20 centimeter separation between all four platforms. And this is no server control. This is strictly importing the data and just drag and drop it into the view. Um, so before we begin the, um, the, the, the so now, oh, sorry, so now we're getting into the most station adjustment. Um, so if you're familiar with our RiseScan Pro, we have this um, very robust cloud to cloud surface matching um, tool um, called most station adjustment that allows us to match pretty much any type of planes together where as long as the uh, data was imported properly. Uh, you can see here, no, sorry. Um, the scan position one through 60 has been selected and also locked, okay? So I locked the orientation and position of all the threshold scans, right? Because I know that's tight. Um, uh, I, I know that's, that's it's clean, it's tight, it's got the lowest, lowest noise level um, value. Um, so what I want to do is that I want to then let the ALS, MLS, and ULS move, right? So all the boxes are checked. Um, you want to start out with setting small search parameters. Uh, so this data is already near itself. It's not, you know, um, it's not floating around and it's, it's already, because it's all RTK based. Um, uh, so I would set a two, two meter uh, search radius. Um, and then max tilt angle is one, and then change of error is one meter, and then um, change of error two is a half meter, okay? And what you wanna do is that you want to reduce that as you run the different iteration, multiple iteration of the adjustment. So, and you have to fine tune it accordingly, okay? So this is not one setting for all, but this is very close. Um, you know, I would not recommend, you know, if you're using RTK on all your platforms, the data is already closed. I don't I don't recommend using 10 meters search radius. So the message here is that use a small search parameters and small change of errors will give you optimal and better results. Uh, so here's our first iteration. Um, you can see um, uh, we got down to uh, five centimeter. Uh, you have a good distribution curve of points. Uh, you have uh, plain patches on all four quadrants of your point cloud and your project. Um, and then what you wanna do now is just reduce the value. Um, and once you reduce the value, you get even better results. Now we're standard deviation is just under three centimeter. You can see my search radius is 0.4, my max tilt angle is 0.8, my minimum change of error is 0 0.01, which is one centimeter. And then um, my change of error two is five millimeters, which then um, you can see 
It's giving a screenshot. So now I'm going to show you a video of, uh, of, of what it looks like. So there we go. Okay. So I just press start. Okay, you can see the data uh, for the MLS, ALS, ULS, TLS, all are lined up extremely well. Um, you can see the noise from the blue, that's the um, unmanned data. Uh, please note, I'm zoomed in very, very close, okay? You can see my, 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 my scale. Um, close this. Okay, uh, you can see I'm zoomed in really close, but we get excellent results. So now let's look at the cross section. Um, so uh, I selected a cross section. You can see um, I highlighted the uh, some ground and also some vertical objects, such as the building itself. And then you can see the result. It's absolutely amazing. Um, I, I was very happy with the results. So you can see each color represents the and this is this is this is just three iterations of adjustments too so um this just shows you that you collect data the right way process it the right way and have the right uh, um, information embedded into the point cloud you can really achieve um good results um here's the final results from um, the adjustments and here's the cross section of the curb you can see the um the the lime, which is the uh, MLS, and the yellow, which is the TLS, which provides the most point density, that's completely homogenized, right? Um, and and what I like about this adjustment is a couple things. One, it does it in real time, so you can see the updates in real time. And then two, it doesn't sit the MLS and TLS data on top of the noise, right? So it kind of like splits the noise and then puts it right in the middle between the ULS data and the ALS data. So that's extremely uh, good results. I couldn't ask for better results. Um, here is the uh, results, uh, combined data. This is an X-ray view at a one centimeter resolution. Same thing here is a bird's eye view. You can see the, 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 the sheer amount of size that is collected and, and all the detail information in there. So um, yeah, very good results. Um, here's the color point cloud. Uh, so data fusion, ALS, ULS, MLS, TLS, Riscan Pro is a very powerful registration software. And it does it beyond the software, it, it does beyond the registration. It also has many tools in there too as well. Uh, as a result, data fusion can be easily done within the Regal's line of ladder systems and software suites. So, all right, thank you very much, everybody. Uh, let's go ahead and take some questions if you have them. Here's my info, uh, please, if you have more questions or want to know more more about what we're doing, how we're doing it, um, and what we're doing uh, with our new building, please uh, give us a shout and then we will um, uh, answer your questions. So yeah, if you have any questions, uh, let's go ahead and um, answer them. So we have a pricing question. What does the 400 VZI cost? The VC400i, it's very competitive. Um, you know, it's a time of flight technology. If you're comparing apples for apples with our some of our direct competitors, uh, we're very competitive. So if you want more numbers, uh, if you want numbers, you have to contact tact us directly. Yeah, sorry, I can't display that right now. Okay, let me see. I'm just trying to expand my... Um... Give me one second here. I, I'm, I'm just trying to expand my um, my question box. I can see more of it. Uh, 
I was working with the LMS 400i. Yeah, so if you're working with the Z-series scanner, um, the data can be useful as well. So it's not just biased to registering data from a VZ 400i. The Z-series is a predecessor of the VZ-series, so you can certainly make use of the that data for sure. Um, pain. Um, okay, so if you're still looking for the dual frequency on the GNSS sensor, um, okay, I will provide that to you. Um, I think I know who you're talking about. I think I know who I'm talking about, so I will provide that to you. It's an L1, L2, um, but I don't know the frequency. Um, let me see. Is it possible for you to share the data? Um, is it possible for me to share the data? I don't mind. I'm willing to share the data, but uh, of course I have to ask uh, the person that's in charge of the data, right? Uh, but I don't think that's a problem. Uh, but um, yeah, send us send me a private email, and then I'll, I'll let me know who you are, and then I'll see if I can share the data with you for sure. I would love to. Um, or the unlocked position ALS. Yes, that is. Um, so the, the question is: Are the unlocked scans ALS, ULS, MLS aligned to the lock ones TLS during the MSA without affecting each other during the registration process? Yes, that is correct. So once I um, uh, I am confident that all of my TLS scans, which is roughly 35 of them, are accurate and merged together uh, perfectly. Yes, I will lock all those, and then once they're locked, they are not influenced only, and they, they don't rotate or uh, translate, only the kinematic data, ULS, MLS, and ALS, then has full range of freedom to it, okay? Um, but if the data was corrected properly and processed properly, you shouldn't have much of a rotation and trans, uh, tr uh, much of a rotation, maybe just translation in XYZ. Uh, I, I know our data, threshold data is leveled, uh, because we have a self-leveling system on there with IMU and dual axle inclination sensor on the VC 400 i so I know our data is leveled. Um, so yeah, so what happens is that the ALS, ULS, and MLS has full range for translation and rotation to the TLS data, but nevertheless, the data is not influenced during, the TLS data is not influenced during the registration, okay? Um, Similar data. Um, okay. Can you sh pull up and show the screen the statistic reports of the adjustment? Uh, yeah. Let me see. Somebody wanted to see the statistics report. Okay. Uh, I'll just pull up what I have on here now. So here on my last adjustment, you can see. Um, uh, we have a good distribution uh, of, of, of points, uh, which is you want to see a bell-shaped curve with a small outlier. Uh, you don't want it to skew left or right. Uh, what this tells me is that it found uh, matching planes throughout the entire 360 degrees of the project uh, and all four quadrants. Um, down here, you can see that my statistical deviation within 3,554 matching planes, um, it was able to analyze, it was able to match it together within uh, 0 0.024 um, uh, standard, devi standard deviation error. Yeah? Um, for the cloud-to-cloud -cloud stuff, the, the initial registration within the TLS scanner, uh, we Brightscan Pro does provide a very robust uh, registration report. Yeah, uh, maybe I can talk that about that another date. But uh, yeah, so you can see uh, there's a error between all the matching planes of 3,554 planes. Um, okay. All right, let me see if I can get a couple more questions. And um, let's see. I would like to have a data set from 
Somebody asks if um, I would like to have a data set from uh, the Regal LMS 400 BZ 400i. Once can lose. Yeah, sure. I can. I can. Sh I can. I can give you. I have plenty of data. I can share. You just send me an email uh, requesting it, so I know you are uh, your email information and such. Okay. No problem. I can share data with you. Uh, what should be external RTK? Uh, if you're using external RTK, um, you can use WGS84, uh, whatever um, corner system you want to collect it. WGS84 is just perfectly fine. When you bring that data into RiseCam Pro, so what happens is that if you set up your Joseph's Manager properly, it does a corner transformation from WGS84 down to NAT83 state plate or whatever UTM you want to work in. So it doesn't matter what you collect uh, in, in external um, with your external uh, RTK. As long as you know what you are collecting in, like was you know if you're collecting NAT83 or you're collecting WGS4, it doesn't matter. When you bring it into RiseCam Pro, there is a uh, GNSS configuration file uh, that you have to um, um, set accordingly. So you set your input, which is WGS84, and then you set your output, which is NAT83 state plane or whatever UTM you want to work in. So it does not matter what you collect in. You can always do RiseCam Pro does the coordinate transformation. Uh, automatically once during the import. Uh, how many plane patches uh, at least for the Fusion? Oh, that's a good question. Hmm, I didn't display that. Um, Raylan, Mr. Raylan, that's a great question. I should have, I should include that. I don't know. Um, I don't know. I, I can answer it when I look at it, but um, I know it creates a ton of plane patches. And you know what? Let me see. Let me see if I have time. Um, yeah, I have a little bit of time. Uh, it, it wouldn't take me long. Um, that's a great question. I should have showed that. Um, so here you can see uh, this is a RiseCam Pro. This is the um, uh, uh, the uh, plain um, patch files. Um, you can see this the kinematic data. Um, hmm, that's a good question. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna dig a little bit into that. Uh, and then I will I'll give you an answer, okay, on how to find out how many plain patches uh, from each file that it made. But this is one of them. And then if I take uh, the, um, the the 1560 data, bring it in here, make that a blue. You can see it's a lot more. And then I can take in the uh, UAV data. Oops. Oops. Bring this in. Make this a different color. You can see, yeah, that's why we have such good results. We have plenty of overlapping planes between uh, all three systems. And then, of course, um, every single scan position has its own, uh, dragging all the threshold stuff. And I'll make that yellow. Yep. Oh, I did select yellow, but the color coded one or, yeah, you can see our plane, um, plenty of planes to uh, choose from. That's why we had some good results. So I will tell you, um, I don't know off the top of my head. Can we use PPK? Um, I don't know. Uh, I have to leave that to some of our kinematic expert, but I believe you can. Um, I don't see why you couldn't use PPK, which is just process uh, RTK. At, I believe. Um, so I, yeah, I don't, I don't see why you couldn't, but uh, let me know. And then I will um, verify with our um, kinematic experts. Uh, if you select, if you, if you select all you can see in the bottom, let me see, if you select all you can see. Oh, I see. Oh yeah. Thanks. Okay. So, um, so I selected everything here, right? This is all the data, and it tells me I have nearly 500,000 points, but I'm not sure if that's the planes or not. So that's why I don't want to answer that. But um, Brett, thanks for that. Let me see. Um, each point is a plane. Oh, okay. <laughs> there we go. So yeah, that's. 500,000 planes, and if I were to, um, uh, 
and then hide. So for example, just the VMX data, you're looking at about 10,000 planes. And then for the uh, airborne data, 1560, you're looking at about 22,000 planes. And then for the unmanned stuff, 24,000 planes. Yeah, so, yeah, okay. All right, just another question regarding the plane patches. Is it written normally in the... Don't know. Um, I don't see that question. Let me just the benches. It is written normally in the info tab. Okay. Hmm. Not sure. Oh, okay. Info tab. Yep. Okay. Well, uh, thank you, everybody. I think that's all the time I have for today. Um, uh, if you want to get more into Data Fusion, uh, give me a shout. I will help you out as much as I can. Um, have a good rest of the week and um, have fun and good luck. Cheers.